Hi, and welcome to our online information session on the Secret Agent Society program. My name is Kathleen Davey. I'm a clinical psychologist and the Chief Operating Officer here at the Social Skills Training Institute, where we distribute the Secret Agent Society. I'm currently based in Sydney, Australia, and I'm joined online today with my colleague, Melissa Legree. Hi, everybody. I'm our Senior SAS Consultant, and I am based out of Ontario, Canada. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Melissa. Um, so, Secret Agent Society, some of you will have no idea what this is, uh, it all sounds a bit too fun, uh, but it's actually a, an evidence-based social and emotional skills program that's used by service providers in the clinical and education um, sectors to empower children's social emotional skills. Now, we've both mentioned that we are from the Social Skills Training Institute. As you can see here, um, we are a wholly owned subsidiary of an organization called the Autism CRC or a Cooperative Research Center for Living with Autism. This is a multi-agency, multiple research organization, um, collaborative um, organization in Australia uh, that we are owned by, it's a not-for-profit research collaborative. Uh, we have the uh, distribution rights for the Secret Agent Society program that was originally designed by Dr. Renee Beaumont out of uh, Brisbane, Australia, and who's now currently based at Will Connell in New York in the United States. And what we're going to take you through uh, online today is some information about the digital edition of the SAS small group program, which has been developed by facilitators for facilitators for delivering with families through um, our, our co-design process with a global group uh, advisory group of facilitators from around the world. Now the small group program is one of the suite of options with the Secret Agent Society program. It really is the foundation uh, program where the majority of the published evidence base is, is found. It's around using small groups or small group work with children, integrating their adult support network with their parents and teachers um, to teach them social emotional skills over a, a basically a six month period, but with an intensive 10 week period, which we will go through in more detail. All right, now, if you haven't guessed already, the program is all espionage themed. The children are training to be secret agents while they are learning a lot of different skills. The Secret Agent Society program incorporates emotion recognition in other people, emotion recognition in yourself and regulation of those emotions in yourself, mostly focusing on anxiety and anger. Uh, it also teaches the children social problem solving skills and a series of social skills uh, that help them to develop friendships or work in teams in, uh, in their lives. Okay, so it's an all in one program that really covers a lot of skills in one package with an espionage theme while the, the kids are training to be secret agents. Let's take a look at a brief snapshot of how this theme is um, animated in a series of gamified learning activities as one component of the Secret Agent Society program. The year is 2030, and soon after birth, all children undergo a genetic screening procedure known as career determination testing. Your CDT results have shown that you are best suited to a career as a special agent. Please enter the International Secret Agent Society Headquarters, where you will begin your training. To successfully graduate from this academy, you will need to complete a three-level program that teaches you how to decode people's thoughts and feelings. Good luck! So as you can see, Secret Agent Society is a lot of fun where the children have the espionage theme through their learning activities. SAS is not just about having a lot of fun with the kids and as a facilitator as well. There is also a very serious side to SAS. Um, there is a very strong uh, evidence-based uh, and applied research uh, culture about the SAS program. <clears throat> the program was originally designed by Dr. Renee Beaumont. <clears throat> excuse me, as her PhD project out of the University of Queensland are here in Australia. Renee is now currently based out of Will Connell in New York in the United States. 
Now, back when she started developing the program, uh, Renee made sure that it incorporated a number of theoretical frameworks that included how children with neurodiverse needs, how their cognitive profiles um, work. As you can see on the image here, things like theory of mind, central coherence theory, uh, and the way our executive functions work in our brains. Also, a range of therapeutic approaches um, and best practices in, in relation to those around behaviour analysis, cognitive behaviour theory, and acceptance and commitment therapy, to name a few. Then, of course, typical child development and which skills are the most practical and useful for kids at different stages in their lives. Now, that... Uh, that mixture of best practice and theoretical frameworks, evidence-based content in the program has then been further extended over the years. Um, there are a number of publications, of evaluation projects, randomized control trials, et cetera, out there on the use of the SAS Small Group Program and our alternative option, the SAS Computer Game Pack. On our website, there is a page called The Evidence. It gives you a nice uh, narrative summary of some of the evidence behind SAS, and there is a list of all the publications. For those of you who love statistics and research methodology, uh, you can go there, find all the references, um, access the studies, and, and have a closer look. What you will find uh, in summarising the practical application of that is that the program's evidence base is very strongly in the 8 to 12-year-olds with social emotional challenges, whether that be autism, anxiety disorder, ADHD, anger management, other, other diagnoses and undiagnosed profiles. Um, however, that has, and that has been expanding over the years from the original autism cohort. And clinically, what I know about the schools and the clinical services who run SAS, it is very much about finding, um, do the skills that the SAS program teach, do those skills fit with what this child needs? And do I, as a clinician or an educator, have the skills and resources to adapt and individualise the way the pro program is built to meet that child's needs? Which is a lot of what the, uh, the SAS training course focuses on, which we'll tell you more about later. Now, to, uh, to move uh, out of the, the background to the program and into what the program actually is and does on a day-to-day -day level, I'm going to hand over now to Melissa to take you through the, the structure of the SAS Small Group Program. Thanks, Kathleen. So as you, got, as you can see here, there's an overview of the program and all the program components. Um, the image is quite small, and so I'm, we're not going to go into the full detail on it. And you, when um, doing your SAS facilitator training, you'll learn all these components. But what I want you to uh, notice here is that the program is set up to include components with parents, child and teachers, as well as there, it can be delivered in a number of different scheduling options. The core intervention components of the program are delivered within a, a, a 10, um, 10 modules or uh, nine modules, which begins with an intro session for parents. And then you have follow up booster sessions that are delivered over the course of six months that you can set up in whatever way works best for your service. So now we're going to look a little bit closer at each of those components. Just briefly, the green box here that's indicating parent meetings. And so what, what happens is parents are, are a huge component of the program as well, and they attend meetings, uh, um, separate meetings to the child, child attending. And we work with the parents to teach strategies and, and give support so that they can help their child to maximize their learning at home, doing their um, in-between um, group activities, as well as um, giving uh, motivators and, and tokens for achieving their skills. We also have our child meetings where they come to their, their child meetings live through our, our, our um, through their portal and they have activities that they do between um, meetings as well. Um, they do home missions, um, they, they earn tokens for um, and rewards for um, demonstrating their skills and practicing as well as engaging with the computer game which I'll tell you about in just a moment. The, there's also an optional teacher session where you could deliver uh, an orientation for teachers, but teachers, their main component when they're involved is that they get access to these really helpful teacher tip sheets that tell them about what the child's learning, gives them tips for how they can support the child to um, practice their skills in the classroom setting or on the playground. And they also, um, depending on the permissions that you give parents and teachers, and especially the teachers, they could have access to, to the skill tracker and help to motivate their student um, at the school setting to use their skills as well. 
Now you'll see here um, between meeting activities are, um, there's a number of them and the digital HQ in particular is a core part of, of what the children do um, um, in between child meetings. So there is a computer game. It's been part of the program since the inception and it's one of the components that the kids love the best. Through the computer game, they actually access different levels where they come in contact with learning the concepts in a way where they can learn the answers before they come to the child meetings and practice and apply what they're learning in the group context. So that, that's the core pieces. There's so much more to talk about. So I'm just trying to give you a quick overview. The delivery of the program is, is possible in face-to-face -face and telehealth delivery. Just this year, there was a huge launch in evolution of the program to digital format, and that has allowed um, providers to deliver the program in both telehealth delivery and face-to-face -face, um, and switch between them as they need to. We'll talk about that a bit more. So the SAS evidence-based framework um, in, has options for online clinical or educational services face-to-face -face clinical and educational services. And also, and supported by the research, there's home-based use that can be done with the program by parents and children if, when supervised by the trained SAS professional. So we've all been working through challenges on how to deliver services in telehealth and face-to-face. -face. And what is really amazing about SAS is that um, with the digital edition format, you can actually switch between back and forth. So there's no more need for um, interruptions to delivering your small group programs. If you're delivering it face-to-face -face and, and need to switch to telehealth, then you can just not even skip a beat and, and switch right over. The reason why we can do that is there is a fully integrated system for um, facilitators to access, the children to access and the parents, as well as any mentors that are given access such as teachers or other adults. There is um, the facilitator training as part of the integrated system. Um, you can access it in, in, in your own time in a self-paced format and also for SAS assistance. There's a facilitator dashboard that is used for setting up your groups, coordinating, delivering your live meetings, prep, and, and, and much more. You also use that to deliver your parent meetings and your child meetings, as I just mentioned. There's a mentor portal that's part of this integrated system that allows for mentors to um, monitor progress of the child, access their um, their gadget packs and helping them to use the resources and skills they're learning when they're out in the community, like at the shopping mall or at the playground. And then the core of the program is the SAS digital headquarters for the children. And that is where, as I said, they access the computer game and also um, their mission journals and where they can join in on their live um, meetings and access their, their notes. Um, it can be delivered flexibly um, within this evidence-based framework. As well, there's a lot of automation that facilitators um, like myself who has delivered the program for, for many years love with um, adding in that automation for administrative and communication tasks, such as sending out reminders to families, um, checking in with teachers and, and more features like that. So that's the whole system. Is there anything you think I missed there, Kathleen, that um, our, our watch, our, our <laughs> viewer would like to know about? Um, I think it is impossible for us to actually cover everything that we could cover in this session together, Melissa, but I think that's a, that's a great overview of how there are so many different um, functions, elements um, that are all integrated together to make it easier. One of the things we might explain next is how that's actually simplified for the children. Okay, there's a lot in this. Melissa's taking you through a lot of different components and functions and automation. For the kids, they just go to one place every time. Uh, it's called SAS Digital Headquarters. 
they log in with a simple uh, login. There is an adult authorization process to protect um, in terms of the security of their use of the software. But once they're in there, uh, they can access their live group meetings with their facilitator. They can look at their old notes. They can access their, their digital gadget pack. Um, they can view and use their skill tracker. Um, and they can play all the gamified um, learning activities that we saw in the video earlier. So this, this image here on your screen uh, is a snapshot of a variety of different elements that are all accessed from the child by one place, digital headquarters, okay? So while there's all these other things going on, they have a nice simple entry point. Um, now, when they go to that point and they enter their live group meetings, or if a parent enters into their mentor portal and joins their live parent group meeting, um, these visuals represent what's happening technically. Okay, we've got two different images, one with the, the blue pictures and one with the green pictures. The blue one is representing a child club meeting. The screen <coughs> that happens to be represented as a tablet on this picture, and it, it doesn't have to be a tablet. The, the tablet that's on the left is the facilitator master controller device screen. Then it is connected through the software to the children in the group. So we're visualizing here a group of three cadets connected to one facilitator. And that facilitator is changing what's on the children's screens uh, in terms of um, what activities they are doing, whether one particular child needs something different put in front of them because they are needing to use a relaxation gadget to calm down, for example, while the others are on another activity. We will go into this in more detail, but they're all connected and the facilitator is facilitating the presentation of the resources and activities to the children in a, in a coordinated way. Very same thing in a parent group meeting. You have the parents logged in perhaps at home or they might be in a room with you. They're logged into their access through their portal. They can write their own notes during the meeting. The facilitator's changing the screen and saying, hey, look at this, this is what your child's learnt. And hey, does anyone uh, have any reflections they could type in or another activity? The parents would enter in their information. It is then saved. They go into their mental portal later and they can access their own notes. They can't see other people's notes. So the facilitator screen there, the green one on the um, left, is connected to each of the parents, represented by three parent screens on the image. Um, during your live group meeting, the facilitator is controlling what's presented when, as they're discussing and doing activities with them, and the parents can then enter in their own notes to refer to later and remind them between sessions. So there's this sort of fantastic live group meeting, uh, coordinated learning process happening, whether it's with the kids uh, or with the parents. In terms of what that looks like, if we zoom in on more detail here, this is an example of a child uh, part of a child club meeting, where on the left, again, we have a facilitator control screen, and on the right, we have what a child would see on their screen. Um, so again, they may be at home on mum's laptop, or they might be um, on their iPad, they might be in a room, you might have three, three or four uh, kids in a room with you with their devices or loan devices just for that session. Um, what we can see here is the helpful thought zapper uh, introduction. You can see on the facilitator screen that there's a, a series of what looks like slides, presentation slides, which is each activity. And the facilitator clicks and shares to make that view on the children's screens. Um, the children can raise their hand, they can view their rewards, uh, they can type and, and create pictures depending on what's happening. I'll, uh, I'll explain that in a little bit more. There's real-time facilitator controls. What the facilitator chooses to put in front of the child is what shows on the child's screen. An example of this is the fun turn-taking activities. Um, this is a, a simple example here where we're replicating throwing a ball around a room to take turns. Okay, so where you might throw a ball around and when Melissa catches the ball, it's her time to introduce herself to the group. Right? Um, so when we can't do that uh, with a physical ball, uh, what we're doing is we're clicking a button here. We might indicate uh, this participant, it's their turn now. We click active and the ball bounces onto their screen, but not the other three children's screens. Or alternatively, there's a star wand or there's a film clapper for perhaps those role play moments to start and finish the role plays. You can click a button and a ball will pop on a different child's screen to indicate the turn taking process. So that's one example of the, uh, their interactive functions and how you control them in real time.
The token reward system that's always been a part of the, the 10 or 11 year old Secret Agent Society small group program um, is also integrated into the software. The facilitator sets a token target for the group and they can click a button that gives all children a token reward at the same time, which is visualized by these colored um, tokens dropping on their screen, or they can click on any of these individual tabs here for a participant to give that one participant a token for their uh, excellent efforts at the activity or practicing their skills. So we've covered some of the activity functionality, like the turn taking and the tokens, um, and that there is a whole range of different activities, turn taking games, fun, helpful thought zapper, shooting activities. Um, there's also some times when you're simply asking the children to answer some questions, either as a team or individually. Now they can do that in a number of different ways, um, depending on their preferences, their literacy skills, and sometimes the device that they're using. Um, for example, let's have a look at this video of a child using the dictation function on his iPad. Walk up, smile and say hello. Okay, so he could have typed that in, but he chose to, to talk to it. There's also drawing. <coughs> most wanting to do right yeah. now is just adding your hobbies and interests so there's things we just talked about Okay, so he, he was writing with his finger, but you can draw pictures as well. Um, and depending on their device, they can insert emoji images to answer their questions or to add emphasis, uh, which of course the kids absolutely love. So there's multiple ways that the children input, uh, including some others are, are dragging stickers onto particular activities. Um, yeah, a range of different, different activities. Um, and it's also a good point here to mention the program is not all about the children interacting with their device. You are doing a whole heap of discussions, role plays, you're getting up and doing a body clues freeze game where you dance around and you freeze and point to your body clues. Um, there's lots of different things happening in a club meeting for the SAS small group program. But sometimes they're recording an answer in their club journals or you're doing an interactive game like the secret message transmission device game. Let's have a look at this one. Another example of an activity through the digital system and how the children are all integrated with the facilitator um, controlling that process is the secret transmission device game, secret message transmission device game. This is where the children are learning how to recognize and identify emotions from other people's tone of voice or pitch and volume of voice. What's happening is the children take turns as indicated by the lead facilitator, uh, being presented with a secret message that they have to say in a particular emotion. The child whose turn it is, they have um, what's visualized on the bottom left of this screen here. They have a, a mechanism where they do a pretend fingerprint scan and they transmit. So they're saying their message out loud while they're doing this. The other children have what's represented up on the top left here, a screen with different emotions that show the words or they flip to show the face and they're selecting which emotion they think that secret message was. The facilitator can actually see on one screen what answer each child has given and then they can facilitate a discussion to help them all to work out the emotion or to determine the winner or whatever it might be. So the kids are all interacting in a different way as a team in a group activity, all controlled and um, and visible by the lead facilitator device. So you can run this activity like on these pictures as in a classroom, in a school, small group classroom, um, where the teacher is running this whole thing standing out the front with an iPad, or you could do it from your own home, running telehealth sessions with children all across different parts of your city, all playing the secret message transmission device game together to learn about tone, uh, pitch and volume to determine people's emotions. Um, another quick example is you can also add in supplemental activities and slides either to the whole group or to an individual child. These screens represent initially the facilitator control where they are determining what new activity they want to insert into the standard SAS material. Then cadet one and two, 
they're presented with, they've got the current activity information, but Cadet 3, Cadet 3 was starting to get a bit angry or anxious and the facilitator decided to ask them to try and rate how they're feeling on an emotionometer so that we can then help them to calm down and keep going. So you can actually insert new content and questions and you can insert a particular tool for each, for a particular device, a particular child in your group while the others continue. You can even put a blank screen in front of them remotely because you want them all to focus on the role play that's going on over in the other corner of the room. All right. So that's, um, I don't know, again, Melissa, the same dilemma I had that you had. Have I, have I missed anything? Yes, <laughs> because we can't possibly cover any of it. Um, but as I hand over to Melissa to talk more about the overall facilitated dashboard and the mentor portal, um, I do want to make a quick note to say we can actually demonstrate some of this for you. Uh, you can contact us, we can do an information session just for your team and show you some of this in, in live, um, live time, I guess. Okay, yeah, take it away, Melissa. Yes, it is a challenge to share the highlights when there's so much content. And so we hope that we piqued your interest. Um, this screen, especially as a service provider, you'd be super interested in it as um, facilitators have their own dashboard. And we were talking about um, earlier how there's a lot of automation um, with tasks that you typically would have to do um, on your own um, systems or in your own processes. So your dashboard includes everything from scheduling um, to picking uh, permissions for mentors, um, access to your actual SAS provider, um, subscription packages, so that you can allot and decide um, um, which cadets get um, certain places to join the program. I'll talk in a moment about um, how the subscriptions and um, pricing works. Also, you can use the resources that are available to you to prepare. So your, your training is on here so you can review it at any time, but there's also practice sessions where you can play around with some of the main features that Kathleen was just talking about um, and, and do it with a, a mock session so you can get more comfortable with it before you run your, your group. There's a, a bunch of video tutorials as well that are helpful for yourself and also that you can share with the families to help them um, get comfortable or to troubleshoot um, different types of uh, features of the program. Now that was the facilitator dashboard. Here is an example um, from the mentor portal. So teachers and parents, depending on permissions, have access to, the, to this. Um, this is an example of uh, the mentor portal for the teacher. And it's showing you one of the teacher tip sheets that they would get access to that the facilitator would control releasing to them once they finish that module that it's for. You can send automated email prompts um, to the teacher and let them know it's available. You can also see if they read it or not. And, um, and that's helpful too, to know who you might wanna reach out to. And you can also, they have access through that portal on um, the digital skill tracker access if you've given them permission for that. And a couple other things, depending on permission, they can, they can also have access to um, progress of the cadet and um, the gadget pack. So there's just a couple examples there. Now, our next screen is just to give you um, a bit of an overview of what the training involves. So SAS being an evidence-based framework um, involves a lot of training around um, how to use the system, but really the core of the program is around delivering effective social skills groups to teach the concepts within the framework. There, the original, um, the training course is available online in um, just in time, um, in a sequential fashion that you can do it in your own pace. Um, when teams are training more than uh, uh, more than one person, more than one staff member, sometimes they'll coordinate together on doing that. But it's really the equivalent of two days of training with 14 hours of uh, flexible self-paced training. And you can do that in a lot of different ways. Um, Kathleen will walk you through explaining you through the program and there's clarity checks along the way as well as video models of real facilitators delivering the program. There's also um, Melissa simulation activities incorporated in where you can actually play the SAS Challenger board game with yourself um, and yeah it's it's all there's actual simulation of real SAS um, activities as well built in 
So it's quite a variety within that training course. <laughs> yeah, and and lots of tips on troubleshooting, planning challenges, and it's it's uh, it's really really dynamic and a really great way for um, teams to be trained. So Actually, that one would of be, the, yeah. sorry, no, go ahead. One of the things I might add there, there's a large um, focus in the training course around how to adapt for different, your teaching and your activities for different types of children. And often one of the questions we get when people are, are learning about SAS, for example, through an information session like this, is, is it suitable for this child or these type of children or this sort of child? Um, and what we would usually say is this, these are the type of children it's evidence-based for, but clinically people use it in a variety of different ways with different children, depending on whether the skills meet what the child needs and that facilitator skills at adapting the program for them. So we explore that a lot in the training as well. So it's, it's certainly not just one size, you know, for one certain group of children, you're encouraged to learn how to deliver your program flexibly. When you decide to sign up, um, you have an SAS provider that then um, signs up and gets a subscription. Uh, you would assign an SAS provider administrator who would manage all those components of, um, of, the, of the subscription. And um, on the right here, you'll see that there's a couple different subscription options that have a base number of how many cadet places that you um, would um, anticipate that you would be delivering in a year. Um, a lot of people when they're first starting it out start with hub with six cadet places and you can always buy more if you use those up in a year um, and, and renew annually with your subscription. This SAS provider um, accepts and gives permission to linking SAS facilitators and SAS assistants um, so that they can all be connected and that really supports the functionality of a lot of the planning and coordinating that is done um, behind the scenes and, and gives access to the training course. Um, there's the, the SAS assistant short course as well that is a really great um, addition to the program so that you can have additional support running programs. So um, one of the things to note is, is related to the ratio of kids to facilitators. So the program and the evidence base is set up for having up to, uh, for one trained SAS facilitator, having um, up to four um, cadets in a group. So three to four cadets. And then if you have two trained facilitators that you can have um, up to six cadets in one group. And typically in that format, you are, um, you're doing, some of the activities together and then for some of the role plays and small uh, uh, smaller activities you're breaking off into smaller groups for the small group program. The image you see on the bottom of the screen here is demonstrating how um, people might be um, once you're a trained facilitator that you could be linked to more than one SAS provider um, and you could also deliver more than one group. So if you are somebody who works maybe privately and also work, uh, works in a school, um, you could be linked to two SAS providers there um, and delivering your groups. Um, all of this information is available on, on the website, but um, myself and Kathleen and the team is more than happy to answer any questions you have and meet with you to explore specific options for you and your program. Fantastic. And I've just uh, popped the website up there. Uh, also, our main um, email address, if anyone does want to find out more from this um, you know, very brief yet hopefully comprehensive information session that we've, uh, we've done for you online today. Um, so please do visit the website or email in um, to ask for any further questions, perhaps to arrange for um, an info session for your team um, to look at how we can, how you would implement it, which packages are best, how does it work for certain children, uh, whatever your questions might be, please do send them through. Uh, and we look forward to meeting you and, and helping you through your SAS journey. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.